Hello, guys. Let's talk more about ionic bonding. We know that this is an electrostatic attraction between ions. One element will give up an electron and the other element is going to gain it. A metal is going to give up its electron. In this case, it's a sodium and fluorine is going to gain it. So we are going to form an Na plus and an F minus fluoride ion. And this is how you make a salt. Okay, I know it's a silly joke. So what are the properties of ionic substances? Well, they have a really well-defined 3D structure as it is visible here, for example, for sodium chloride. The sodium ions are represented with the purple spheres and the chloride ions are represented with the green spheres. From here, it makes sense that these structures are actually brittle. They have high melting points, so they are extremely stable. They are crystal and they are going to cleave along smooth lines. But why are they so stable? This is due to the so-called lattice energy, which can be defined in two ways. The first way is the lattice dissociation enthalpy. How much energy is required to completely separate one mole of an ionic solid into its gaseous ions? So if we have one mole of NaCl solid, how much energy do we need to put in to make Na plus and Cl minus? And this process is going to be endothermic, meaning we are going to put in a lot of energy to separate those ions from each other. Now, if we look at the lattice formation enthalpy, so how much energy is released when one mole of an ionic solid is formed from its gaseous ions, so we have Na plus and Cl minus ions forming NaCl solid, this is going to be a highly exothermic process, meaning that we are going to release a lot of energy. When I think about lattice energy, I generally think about the lattice formation energy or lattice formation enthalpy because the product of this reaction, the formed ionic compound, is going to be significantly more stable than the separated ions in their gaseous state. Okay, I hope this makes sense. So how do you figure out the trends in lattice energy? Well, the magnitude of the lattice energy in an ionic compound depends on the charges of the ions, their sizes, and their arrangement in the solid. Because this is an electrostatic attraction, we can show the magnitude of the lattice energy using the electrostatic potential energy which can be calculated using this nice formula right here. So kappa is just simply the Coulomb constant, which is a proportionality constant. Q1 and Q2 are the charges on the particles, and D is the distance between the centers of the two ions. So if you have large ions, then the centers are going to be further apart. If you have small ions, they are going to be closer together. So it makes sense that when you have higher charges, so Q1 and Q2 are a larger number, then the electrostatic potential energy is going to increase. So together with it, the lattice energy is going to be larger. And when you have smaller ions, so the distance between the two ionic centers is smaller, then we again going to increase the lattice energy. So to summarize, the lattice energy increases as the charges on the ions increase and as their radii decrease. So let's take a look at an example and compare lithium fluoride with beryllium oxide. Now, first we need to look at the charges on these ions. If we take a look at the periodic table, we have lithium right here. So it's going to have a plus one charge. Beryllium here is going to have a plus plus two charge oxygen here so is going to have a minus two charge and fluorine here so is going to have a minus one charge in its ionic form so let's write that out in lithium fluoride we are going to have lithium plus ions and fluoride ions f minus in beryllium oxide we are going to have beryllium two plus ions and 
O2 minus ions. So it's visible if we just simply look at the charges in the particles, then when you multiply plus one times minus one, you are going to still get just minus one. But when you multiply plus two times minus two, you are going to get minus four. So if we assume that the ionic radii are approximately the same, the lattice energy in case of beryllium oxide can be up to four times higher compared to lithium fluoride because of this nice equation right here. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. What are the trends in the ionic radii? Let's take a look at the periodic table. So we know that as we go down in a group, the atomic radius is going to increase because you are adding more and more shells. What happens with the ionic radius? The same thing, the ionic radius will also increase. So let's say if we look at lithium, sodium, potassium ions, lithium is going to be the smallest cation, then sodium, then potassium. Okay, what happens when we go left to right within a period? Well, we know that here the atomic radius is going to decrease because we are adding electrons into the same shell while increasing the number of protons. This happens also to the ionic radius. It's also going to decrease, but there is a difference when you are forming cations and anions. So in case of metals, for example, lithium, beryllium, and boron, we are going to form positively charged ions, right? So when we have lithium plus, beryllium 2 plus, and boron 3 plus, we can easily figure out that these are isoelectronic, so they are all going to have the same two electrons in both three ions. However, in lithium, we are going to have three protons. In beryllium, four, and in boron, five. So because the number of protons increases as we go left to right within a period, we are going to decrease the ionic radius. So lithium is going to be the biggest, then beryllium, and then boron is actually the smallest right here. Okay, what happens when we talk about negatively charged ions like the oxide ion and the fluoride ion? So O2 minus and F minus, right? So again, these are isoelectronic. So we are going to have 10 electrons in both O2 minus and F minus. But in case of oxygen, we have eight protons. And in case of the fluoride ion, we are going to have nine protons, which means that the fluoride ion is actually going to be smaller than the oxide ion. But you cannot say from here that B3 plus is actually larger than O2 minus because this is not true. So you have to look at the trends within the metals and within the nonmetals. Let me show you on another figure right here. So here the gray represent the neutral atoms, okay, and the radius. And if you just look at this gray part right here, you are going to see that as you go left to right, the atomic radius is indeed decreases. Now, when you look at the ionic radius, when you have cations like lithium plus, beryllium 2 plus, and boron 3 plus, you see that again, the ionic radius decreases, but the radius of O2 minus is significantly larger than the radius of boron three plus because we have way more electrons. However, as we go from O2 minus to F minus, we are again going to decrease the ionic radius. Okay. And if we go down in a group, it's visible in every single case, no matter if there are cations or anions, that the ionic radius indeed increases. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Let's try to arrange the ionic compounds sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, and cesium iodide in order of increasing lattice energy. The first thing that I want to look at is the charge, right? Because if I have a 2 plus 2 minus charge, it's going to give me a significantly higher lattice energy compared to the 1 minus or 1 plus ions. So in case of sodium chloride, 
So sodium is right here, chlorine is right here. We are going to have Na plus and Cl minus ions in the crystal lattice. In case of magnesium oxide, we are going to have magnesium is right here, oxygen is right here. We are going to have Mg2 plus and O2 minus ions. In case of cesium iodide, we are going to have cesium is right here, iodine is right here, Cs plus and iodide I minus ions. So from here, it makes sense to say that actually the highest lattice energy is going to be in the compound that is going to have higher charges, right? Because with increased charge, so Q1, Q2 increases, the electrostatic potential energy will also increase. So this is here is going to have the highest lattice energy out of the three. Now, how do I decide between sodium chloride and cesium iodide? I have to look at the ionic radii. I know that if I go down in a group, the ionic radii will increase. And also, as I go left to right within a period, the ionic radius will decrease. So let's find the smaller ionic radius because as D, the distance between the two ionic centers gets closer, the lattice energy also increases. So it's visible from the periodic table that sodium is way above cesium, right? So sodium is going to have a smaller ionic radius together with the chloride ion, right? Which is also going to have a smaller ionic radius compared to the iodide ion. So this means that NaCl is going to have smaller distances between the ionic radii than a cesium iodide. So sodium chloride is going to have a higher lattice energy compared to cesium iodide. So let's put everything in increasing order of lattice energy. So the smallest lattice energy is in cesium iodide just because we are going to have one plus and one minus charges and the ionic radii are extremely big then we are going to have sodium chloride we are still going to have the same charges however the ionic radii are smaller so the centers are closer to each other and then the highest lattice energy is in magnesium oxide because we are going to have a two plus and a two minus charge all right, I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.